Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Umu Juku Writers Media Group, USA. Coming to you live from New York City. Today, we have another privilege to be with the leader of the free world. The Supreme Leader. The, I don't know which name, but let me just pass it. So call him Muhammad Ike. So call him any name you can. I know you don't know Santapo. But I address him as Machineke. He's here with us. And we have some brief, short interview to do with him. And this question has been disturbing the mind of our people back home. But uh, our leader made it very clear to us that he's here in USA because he don't know what is happening with our brothers and sisters here in USA, most precisely the Biafras. So he chooses to come here since last month before the May the 30th. And this man has been all over the United States of America. So ladies and gentlemen, without wasting much of your time, I would like to look on this young man. Marcy, your life of here. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. May we know your name, please. Nam the Kano. An old man that they call a young man. But I accept it. I think it's a, it's a compliment. It's a very big compliment. I accept it. You are welcome to USA. Thank you. And before we further with uh, many questions, there was an event that took place here in Crown Plaza Hotel, JFK, New York City. And I am the coordinator. The whole place was jam-packed. We were very busy in the hall, but I was meant to know that more than 70, 60 percent of people were turned back to the extent that the hotel they had to shut down the elevator to deny people access to the floor where we have in the, the town hall. Are you aware of that? Yes, I was told because a lot of people have come ever since to complain. Um, a lot of our people that live around New York area uh, tried to get into the event. They weren't able to do so because their hall had filled to capacity and was overflowing. And even those that went to East themselves couldn't get back in anymore because their seats were taken. And the fire service actually complained to the hotel that, you know, we had too many people on the ninth floor of the Crown Plaza Hotel near JFK here in New York. And for that reason, they had to shut down the elevators. So a lot of people, very important people, I must say, uh, weren't allowed to get into the hall afterwards. It wasn't very pleasant because I would have wanted to have all of them in the hall. But as it turned out, it allowed me then to then go to Bibo the next day or two to go and address them, to calm their feelings and to assuage their worries because a lot of them were worried that they couldn't come into the hall to hear me speak. So all in all, it was, um, it was a well-managed event or should I say incident. But next time, I hope we'll be able to get a bigger hall to accommodate everyone. You're welcome. The next big question is this. Some people have asked me about that. The red heart that you're putting on now, mm. is it the significance you know, of battle or war? Or the, can you explain more about that red barrier? Mm. We are confronting the enemy right now as, as, as I speak or as we interact. Anybody who doesn't know what is happening back home is either deceiving him or herself or is living in a cloud cuckoo land because the fact of the matter is that the enemies have come. They are in our land and we are engaging them as we speak. On a daily basis, we are engaging them in Eboi, in Enugu, and before that in Anambra as well. And so it is a sign of the time. 
any time I'm putting on this hat, it signifies that our people are engaged on the ground massively in an effort to repel the vandals, the invaders who are in our land. They keep trying, but we keep repelling them, and we shall continue to do so. It doesn't matter what they say, how frightening their press statements may come across. Insofar as Biafra land is concerned, that is IPOB territory, and we shall continue to meet them. In your analysis, before you went to jail, you said in your broadcasts that when the people of Germany, but you were specific, precise, that when USA Biafras will wake up, you will know that Biafra is here. I don't know if that's the reason why you came here. And I don't know if, based on your tour in the United States, do you believe that Biafrans in the USA have woken up? I believe they have with my coming. It has resonated. A lot of people have started to identify openly with IPOB and the entire Biafra project, whereas before they were slightly hesitant and, um, and um, fearful of their involvement. I, I would say it's a very good thing in general. All the events that I attended, that I went to, were well attended. I'm culminating in the spectacular finale we had in New York City. And you, as you well know, Houston, New York and Los Angeles are key areas for our people and to an extent Chicago as well. So I would say overall that the consciousness of our people have been elevated to, to a position where nobody can claim ignorance of what we are trying to do or what we are trying to accomplish. So in that regard, I think we did accomplish what we set out to do in the first place. And mind you, we are coming back again here next year, in July of next year, to take our people down on a march to Washington. Some say it is one million. I call it two million. What I want to see on the street is two million people here in the USA to let American people know that their friends are here and to let them know that we have one yearning, one demand, one aspiration and one goal, which is to restore Biafra. And at that point, I will be able to revisit your question, but I can tell you categorically that I have not changed nor wavered from the assertion that I made earlier, that the United States of America is pivotal, is central, is critical to the emancipation of Biafra from the clutches of the damnation they call Nigeria. And it will start here. It's already started anyway. Um, the, um, it will culminate next year, and I believe by then we would have gone way down, making sure that Biafra is restored as quickly as possible. In the spirit of the Americans and the Biafra Americans, there are so many negative questions that were thrown at you here in the US by some of the reporters come across you. There were so many negative things that were said about you. I don't know if you're still angry with the Americans or are you okay? No, I, I don't consider them as anything negative. It was an opportunity for people to know me better or to understand what we are fighting for. Sometimes negativity can be a very good thing because amongst our people, gossip and innuendo tend to travel faster and quicker than correct news, so to speak. Uh, so when they come in contact with us, in contact with what IPOB stands for, they quickly change their mind. So I wouldn't see it as anything negative, but as a very positive opportunity for us to try and explain ourselves properly, that we might be properly understood also by the people. The main boring point. We know you have already treated it, but you might not be walking by and like you back in Busi. All right? You have touched that part in many of your town hall meetings. But I would like you to bury it now because you are in USA and you are in New York. The issue of defense fund. 
you have handled that issue can you enlighten more about that issue with the first one are you going to start it again but that will be it the first one will be ongoing at some point in the future i will announce it and uh by then i hope that people would have been sufficiently informed as to the need for it uh, to enable them make the decision to contribute towards it defense fund was not paid by americans in in totality not even amongst IPOB family members those of you in new york did not pay we did no we didn't say it you didn't pay, pay. No, you go and ask him for your money. You don't. You don't ask us. We are telling you. To no, but the the money. That's why this is life, so you can hear it too. Nenayanya is our overall finance officer, IPOB worldwide, and uh, she is a woman of of immense integrity and substance. One of the pioneer contributors to Radio Biafra and IPOB before a lot of people came along. Anything she tells me, I believe, is gospel. And everything is properly documented. You are aware that when we went to the Chicago Town Hall meeting, we provided proof of the money we paid to Bruce Fain. Sure. That some people claim they were paying. Oh, can you put more enlightenment? Absolutely. IPAB paid Bruce Fain $35,000. Cash. We transferred from, our, from IPAB accounts in Germany to, to the law firm's accounts here in the USA. We never talked about it because we felt it wasn't something that needed to be ventilated for no reason. But they kept going on about it. Other groups, so to speak, claiming they are pro Biafra, we are busy collecting money from people across the United States of America, pretending or lying to them that they were using this money to prosecute a case on behalf of IPOB. But that was a lie. And I challenged them when I went to Chicago on the issue of the defense fund. United States of America contributed only $2,778, the whole of USA. And it's only Massachusetts that paid. If anybody has a right to complain about defense fund, it is Madam Erwa and the rest of them in Massachusetts. No other human being. And the funniest thing is that those who did not contribute towards our defense fund are the, the people most vocal are most vociferous about it and uh, they have now pushed and pushed and pushed i have published the entire account now the full and is know that we only have one hundred and fifty four thousand dollars exactly which is what they've been pushing for now we've told them and look at all the time we've been fighting the full and without making noise about it do people know or wish to even know how much we have spent fighting the Fulani oligarchy in our land, Miyet Yala Fulani headsmen and all the rest of them. It takes and costs a lot to get these things to happen. Our people don't understand it because most of them have been raised on a diet of gossip. And it is a very shameful thing that um, some people that claim they're educated still bought into all that nonsense. But I'm very glad that now I'm in the USA. I can confidently say that we have put to bed all that nonsense. I'm not sure anybody will be brave enough to open their mouths to talk about defense fund anymore. I think we've buried that. Because I came here, I was in Houston, they didn't come out. I went to Chicago, they were nowhere to be found. In Los Angeles, the same. And I'm in New York, where I felt for the very first time we had an encounter that resembled a town hall meeting. Because I loved the very robust, um, should I say, counter-arguments that came from the floor. It was something that I enjoyed. But of course, we found out that the man was lying. Because there was no Abba, Abia sector to start with. Now, that, these are the things that we are being confronted with. That it is the liars and the cheats who complain so much. Because either they are driven by greed, envy, and jealousy. Or they are being, you know, controlled by Fulani somewhere in Abuja. Okay, there's one interesting question I need to ask you. Because so many Americans, Biafran Americans, they have been, you know, they felt threatened 
when you announce that there will be no forgiveness. So now, if the Americans are woken up from their sleep and gossip and playing of obesity, are you going to forgive them? The only forgiveness I will ever contemplate is that if they join IPOB and participate in the resurrection of Biafra, pay their dues and contribute, I repeat, contribute towards the emancipation of our land. If they don't do that, then they will not enter Biafra. Okay, so let's go for that. The issue of one dollar. You told yes. them to pay one dollar. So if yes. they pay one dollar, they will enter Biafra. Of course they will. No, if they pay one dollar, they enter Biafra. Not one dollar once, every month. There's them no. and their children okay. every blessed month until Biafra, until our flag is raised up then the the, the hardcore yes uh, because yeah, those that pay 60 I pounds a month or 60 dollars i should say because this is america immediately you leave we have a lot of educated people here professors they will put us in a hot spot but this will be an evidence for me to challenge them if you can expatiate it further down about this issue of one dollar, because on the over one dollar, six years ago, they had over one dollar. We couldn't win any It's not just it's that what we are doing is one dollar. Not just the Ebers. Yes. Yeah, so can you please? No. The problem. The reason why everybody is saying about the Ebo Ebo, if Ebo wake up, one Ebo man here will give you whatever you need, but they will be gossiping and yapping. So. This issue, if you can just make it more clear, so that those that are paying fifty and sixty will say, "Only this was it one one dollar." No, no, I think I've explained. I explained it during the town hall meeting. Yes, what I'm yes. saying is, is that there are those that support what we're doing. Yes. Support people who are supporters. You know, like even in the football game, there are those who are in the pitch who are on the pitch. I have to be grammatically correct. There are those who are on the pitch playing. And there are supporters all over the place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The same thing with freedom fighting. We will have supporters. But at the same time, those that pay 60, not 50, 60 dollars every month are the hardcore. Those who are under oath. Those who are entitled to know what is happening. The other people outside are mere supporters. They are not under oath. They are not required to take any oath, but they support Biafra. Then, so many people are telling me to, to let you go and rest. <laughs> that we have pulled you so much. <laughs> 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 but I will just give you my own last question. Go ahead. I will let you rest. Go ahead. When I joined this struggle, you are a man of many parts. If you're looking for wisdom, it's there. If you are looking for history, you are a good historian. If you are in spiritual aspect, you are there. That's why I call you my bishop. And also I call you Wachinik. I remember that time I started listening to the radio. You will start saying that Biafra is our religion. Here on Radio Biafra mm -hmm. That's one of the things that pulled me very close to you. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that religion we are in it or you still gonna introduce us because so many people are still going to church. I'm a Pentecostalist for like 30 years, I was born again at that age of life. When I heard your voice, I felt I have been wasting my life all this while. Mm -hmm. So the truth I heard from you, I never heard it from the pulpit. So now I embraced Biafra as my religion. If you go there, mm -hmm. the time we went to United Nations, you will see me with the big sign saying that Biafra is my religion. Mm -hmm. I don't hear you say it anymore. Before you close your broadcast, you will say Biafra is our religion. And here on Radio Biafra, we worship. They worship, yes. Is there any changes? You said before I close my broadcast. Yes, yes. Recently, how many times have I, I have been never heard <laughs> so, I, I, I no longer broadcast well, as, as frequently but as I used that to. Thing, you know, I... Now, Biafra is our religion. The same way it is here in America that 
the, the, the survival, the sustenance, and the advancement of their deals of USA is religion. Today is the 4th of July. And there are the, 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 the stars and stripes, that's what you call the flag here, isn't it? It's flying everywhere. People are very proud, very patriotic. Because America is number one. It doesn't matter if you're a Baptist, a Catholic, a Pentecostal. That is all irrelevant. When duty calls, you serve America first. Is that correct? Sure. That makes America the number one religion here. The same way it will be in Biafra. That is why Biafra remains a religion. People have faiths. Those, you're talking about people's faith. You can, uh, you can decide to express your faith via uh, Judaism, via Christianity, via Pentecostalism, via whatever, uh, Omenala, if you so prefer. But although I know that Omenala is the true Jewish way of worship anyway, but we'll get to that later. Our, the centrality of every of our belief is predicated on the fact that Chukwu Kika Biama gave us Biafra to bring light to Africa. And in that respect, Biafra is a religion. And one that must be held on to tenaciously. Unless you're close, you're blind, you cannot see anything. But if you are in the spirit as we are, that is why every proclamation, every utterance comes to pass. With precision. Because Chukwu Kika Biama is here. Because Biafra is a divine project. The blind cannot see it, I'm afraid. Only the wise can be let into the secret. And you only become wise when you are IPOB. Without IPOB, you are nothing. And we are going to demonstrate it before the whole world. That is why Biafra will come. With or without the input of all those people that think they matter. They do not matter because power resides with the people. And because of the suffering of the people, we have cried and cried and cried and heaven have heard our petition. That is why the zoo is crumbling before our eyes. And that is why Somalia will be a better place than the zoo at the end of this process. And inevitably, Biafra will come. And then we glorify heaven. So, can you leave a word for New Yorkers and the New Jerseyans? It's for them not to think like black people. Once you reason like a black person, you're finished to you become a slave. Not just to the white people, but to your own ignorance as well. I ask them to reason like their friends. To recognize that we are made for a purpose. To bring light where once there was darkness. That is our mission, that is our goal. If they recognize it, then they will participate as I expect them to. A lot of them have shown interest. And hopefully they will come out to be part of what we are doing. Can you please round up this broadcast with that? We preach the gospel of Elohim. on Radio Biafra. That is why we maintain always and assiduously that Biafra, this same Biafra, is our religion and no other. You may have your faith, but Biafra is the religion. And on Radio Biafra is the platform of truth. That is where we shall continue to worship until Biafra comes and beyond. And we have only one God indivisible. One Chukukika Biama. And only him is our God. Now and forevermore. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we end today's broadcast. I'm not the love of the few, but it's um, Trump. <laughs> no, 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 no. Before they start complaining. You say that this is the last miracle on this planet Earth. Uh, absolutely. That is, we are expecting the miracle. Absolutely. That it's only God that will give us Biafra. Absolutely. So this is Umuchuku. Writers Media Group USA. Yes, signing off. And we are about to sign off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless. Thank you. Thank you.